What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fistograph Series. I want to continue to examine 100 years of world championship fights. July 26, 1938 was an upset in the making because Al Hastad actually knocked out Freddie Steele in one round for the NBA middleweight championship belt. And that was amazing because Freddie Steele could punch. Beautiful jab, very good body punching. He was known for his body punching. And for him to be knocked out in that fashion was amazing. So I just wanted to show you Freddie Steele and Al Hastak. As you can see, Al Hastak had a record of 65, 9, and 11 with 43 knockouts. So he could punch, but it was just amazing to see that happen. And it took place July 26, 1938. We also went over the fight between Lou Ambers and Henry Armstrong when he became a three-weight division world champion, August 17, 1938. And that was fascinating. So Henry Armstrong is now a three world weight division champion. Fascinating fighter Henry Armstrong was. Lou Ambers, Hilkemeyer Hurricane, dynamite fighter himself. And he would win his title back, but he would lose it to Lou Jenkins. As the series goes on, we'll learn about that. And I'm just showing you these men on the cover of Ring Magazine. And this is how they look on the cover of Ring Magazine. Henry Armstrong and Lou Ambers. Now, March 11th, 1938, Max Baer drops Tommy Farr for the first time in his career. Tommy Farr went 15 rounds, and he was the very first title defense that Joe Lewis would have after he would win the championship from Max Baer in 1937. So this Tommy Farr and Max Baer, their fight that took place March 11th, 1938. Now I want to show you a picture, an old picture of Benny Lynch. Benny Lynch was a flyweight champion. Very fast fighter he was, was Benny Lynch. He would take on a young man by the name of Peter Kane, another very good fighter. I'm trying to focus this here. So this is Benny Lynch. As he looked in his prime. Here you have Peter Kane, March 24th, 1938. He would face Benny Lynch at the Ant Field in Liverpool. It would be a 15 round draw. Peter Kane was something else, also. Very good flyweight he was. And he would become a fascinating champion. British flyweight champion was Peter Kane. Now, I just wanted to show you Benny Lynch. He made the cover of Ring Magazine as well. Now, Benny Lynch was 24 years old, stood 5 foot 4 inches. Peter Kane was 20 years old. He also stood 5 foot 4 inches. But Benny Lynch had a 65 inch reach, had a record of 87 wins, 12 losses, 16 draws, and 33 knockouts. That's for Peter Kane. He was born February 28, 1918, in Lancaster, United Kingdom. He died July 23, 1991. He was 73 years of age at the time of his death, and he would reside in Liverpool, United Kingdom. I met Peter uh, Kane. I remember I met him twice, as a matter of fact. Now, he fought from 1934 to 1951. He had 100 total bouts with 89 wins, 8 losses, uh, 54 knockouts, and he was stopped five times. I'm pretty sure it was 54 knockouts was his knockout reign as a professional. And uh, Kane defeated Benny Lynch for the NBA Flyweight Championship and the World Championship belt. Through a forfeit, you see Benny Lynch weighed over the limit. He was 119 pounds and instead of 118 pounds. March 24th, 1938. He didn't want to shell out the money. They fought anyway. So... The belt was lifted from Benny Lynch, and it was given to Peter Kane. And I just wanted to go through that fight with you. Now, Kane won the vacant World Flyweight Championship from Jackie Jurd. It was September 22nd, 1938. He was at the football ground in Liverpool. He won the British Flyweight crown 
from Patty Ryan, Liverpool, October 29th, 1942. I'll show you Patty Ryan as well. He lost the championship and the Commonwealth British Empire title to uh, Jackie Peterson. So that's the history of these guys. Let me show you uh, Patty Ryan for one moment. I'm sorry, I couldn't locate Patty Ryan. Uh, try to locate him a little later in a different book. I have 950 scrapbooks and it could be anywhere. I apologize. We're looking at Al Gaynor when he faced John Henry Lewis. You're looking at John Henry Lewis, actually. And these two men would get it on in 38 as well. It was at Forbes Field, which is in uh, Pennsylvania. John Henry Lewis defeated Al Gaynor. 15 rounds, New Haven, Connecticut. And it was at the arena where Dave Fitzgerald would say that would be enough. And it was only on the card where you made up a future champion such as Billy Kahn and Sammy Angard. You also had Fitzgerald on that card. And it was a stable made of John Henry Lewis. And his name was Honey Boy Jones. And this bout was held when John Henry Lewis was originally scheduled to face Tiger Jack Fox. But it didn't happen because of an eye injury. And the doctor had made a conscious decision to give a recommendation to the commissions not to sanction this bout. Because of that, he was stripped of his belt. But after he defeated Al Gaynor in Connecticut, they would give him his belt back. And it would be at that point where he would give up that belt and move up to weight and heavyweight to face uh, Joe Lewis. And he'd be stopped in one round in January of 1939. So that's basically what happened there. Um, but then Tiger Jack Fox would get an opportunity again when he faced Milo Patina and he would lose that fight. And that would be his last shot at the light heavyweight championship belt. And Milo Patina and Tiger Jack Fox would fight for the belt that John Henry Lewis would relinquish when moving up in weight to face Joe Lewis January of 39. So that's the circumstance there. So I just wanted to show you Tiger Jack Fox. He's a young man. John Henry Lewis didn't face because of an eye injury. So this will be the last video here. I'll go on to another video. Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fistical Series, All Great Fights and All Great Fighters. Would never be forgotten on my channel. And look out for another video, 100 Years of World Championship Fights.